around 200 years ago, the pirates of the Caribbean would sail up here on their privateer ships after robbing the Spanish of their gold. And they would land in places like this, in Nova Scotia, near Liverpool. Although uh, the beaches were far inland, and they would bury their treasure amongst the trees. And that's where our story begins. Several years ago, it was during a class for uh, Asian studies, and um, I walked in. There was this Chinese girl sitting in the corner of the room. She was like off to herself, dressed all in dark, looked so that she didn't want to be there. And um, her whole personality and that was like she wanted to just disappear in the corner. So. I didn't take much interest in her at that time, but like one day during class, we moved into a different classroom. She was sitting across from me, and I saw this uh, her uh, shoe dangling from her foot, and she's wearing a pink shirt at the time. And so I was thinking, wow, isn't that sexy? So I decided to that the next day or the next week when class started again that I was going to cross the room and sit with her, which I did. And um, I was nervous as hell, I was just shaking. So I had to put my arms under the table so she wouldn't notice. And uh, she told me later, she was wondering, uh, who the hell is this guy? But uh, she took an interest in me right away and wherever I went, she seemed to be there. And One time the professor had us go to a small classroom for an audio video presentation on the subject and so she sat she found the table I was at and she sat near it and during the whole time since I wanted to be with her so much I leaned across the table slightly and stayed in that position for one and a half hours with a screaming pain running down my back because I just wanted to be near her. And eventually we got to talk and then I made dating plans with her. But it was uh, three months before she contacted me again on the on the email about our date. Because I told her that if she wanted to go out sometime, just email me and because she was never ready to go out. And eventually we went to uh, Wildlife Park, one of my favorite places to go. And I remember her saying to me, uh, she said, thank you so much. She said, that was the best time I had in years. And uh, that made such an impression on me. That I instantly fell in love with this girl. And she was so sexy. She had this really sexy voice. That when she talked on the phone, I mean, she was a Chinese accent because she was from southern China near the Vietnam border. 
but she still continued to wear her dark outfits and even though I was encouraging her to try dresses and try something with color in it, I said, you're hiding your looks. And I told her to grow her hair longer because she had short hair at the time. I said, the longer your hair is, the better off, you know, the better looking you will be. And so, um, eventually she did slowly grow her hair. She said she'd do it for me. So she grew her hair long and we used to go shopping together and we'd discuss clothing styles and, and what would look best on her and eventually she was trying on dresses, not wearing them, but trying them on just to please me and we'd go shopping together and she'd pick out outfits. I'd tell her why the outfit looked good, why it didn't look good, what colors would look good on her because I had studied fashion before. I remember her telling me about her previous dates, why she was so withdrawn and cold it had to do with uh, the fact that every guy that she went out with these were all Chinese guys these weren't white they had proposed sex to her and if uh, she refused to have sex with him they'd dump her and uh, she said she just didn't she wasn't into that after knowing a guy for one or two months of relationships and men in general and this is why she had always wore dark clothes and was in the corner. Her first love of her life, that lasted two months. She was introduced by friends. But um, he dumped her because she wouldn't have sex with him. And she had given her heart completely to him. And when he dumped her, it was just, she said, she had taken uh, almost a year to get over the loss. She had loved him so much. So well, after a while we decided to move in together because she liked the idea of um, living in the apartment with me. And one day I walked in the apartment and she had come out of the room wearing one of the outfits that we had picked out. She said it was the first time she wore a dress in years. It's, uh, she had picked it out and put it on especially for me. Man, I'm telling you, when she came out of the room and she was wearing that dress, she had herself all beautiful, I mean, she threw away all her black stuff, all her hiding clothes. She was wearing that beautiful flowery dress that we looked at. She surprised me with it. She said, I wanted to wear this for you. This is the first dress that I've worn in a long time. And I thought, man, baby girl is healed. She's finally healed. I told Pue about the uh, hairstyle that I particularly liked on uh, Asian women. So I asked her if she would wear it, but she didn't know how to do it, so I styled her hair for her in that particular fashion. Later on we went out grocery shopping, and I wore my uh, mirror lens sunglasses so I could watch the reaction of the public. When she, when she was in the grocery store, and I noticed that when guys would go by with pushing shopping carts, they'd have to take a second look at her, even if they had their wives with them. And I noticed other guys from across the grocery store would be turning around and glancing back to see her. I had helped her realize her full beauty. One time when she was at class, she stayed extra late, and the buses had stopped running at 12 o'clock, so she would given me a call to come down and pick her up. I told her I'd bring the bike to make it faster and she could ride the bike home and I'd walk. She asked for a particular type of shoe because she was wearing sandals at the time and it was rainy outside. So I grabbed a bag of shoes that I thought was the one she wanted and turned out it was slippers. And it was they were absolutely useless to her. So I told her to sit on the bike and I would uh, pushed the bike home so we could walk together. It reminded me of a man guiding a horse with this fabulous Asian princess sitting on the bike. So from that point on I had nicknamed her Princess Pei Pei from the Jackie Chan Owen Willis movie Shanghai Noon. What 
to do how to move him I've been changed yes really changed in these past few days when I've seen myself I seem like someone else I don't know how So we got together and we went grocery shop and did it, you know, did everything, went everywhere together, fell in love. One day we had this really big uh, typhoon or hurricane, depending on where you're living, that came up. And the building we were living in at the time, it was so tall that uh, it would sway back and forth in strong winds. So we were up in the apartment. I knew it was coming and I was well prepared for it. So when the hurricane typhoon hit, it, um, I noticed, uh, well I told her let's have dinner first. We cooked it be early because I fully expected the power to go out in the building. So, um, which it did after, just after we had got it cooked, the power went out. Plus we had seven days worth of water. I would made sure we had storage batteries so when the power did go out it was out because of the destruction it was out for seven days but we were the only apartment in the building that actually had electrical light and plus we had water and we could use the stove and cook because I knew how to manage that as well so plus we had a television set that ran on batteries so very little change for us um, so we were up in the apartment and I noticed the uh, the tea and the wine and the glasses was moving at an angle, it was swaying back and forth. And I told her we have to get out of this building because, it's, because you stood up and tried to move across the room, you'd feel yourself going back and forth like you were on a ship. So we took the elevator, not the elevator, we took the stairs down because the elevator was out. And there was another Chinese couple had done the same thing. And so we sat out the typhoon hurricane in an adjoining smaller building well the building that we were in which had a, a, approximately uh, 5,000 people living in it was swaying back and forth I was quite proud of the fact that I had been able to protect her from and made the effort to protect her from the hurricane or typhoon but I wish I had been able to protect her from what would happen next and separate us forever when I bring him down should I scream and shout? Should I speak of love? Let my feelings out. I never thought I'd come to this. What's it all about? Yeah. If he said he loved be frightened I couldn't go just couldn't go I turned my head I'd back away I wouldn't want to know it scares me so 